Hi, welcome to the Craft Channel. My name's Corin Brad, and today I'd like to turn the humble potato into some great graphic prints on fabric, like these ones that you see here. Very simple process. And uh, although I don't like to waste food, I've always got potatoes in the back of my fridge that are growing eyes and tendrils. So this is a great way to use them up if you don't want to eat them. Let's pop that to one side. Um, I find a new potato is better. But what you will find with any potato is they can be very, very damp. So protect your work surfaces with some kitchen towel. And first of all, you want to cut your potato in half. Now you can use a bladed kitchen knife that hasn't got serrations on the blade. Or if you've ever worked with polymer clay, you can buy these blades that are called tissue blades that are very thin, slightly flexible, but they essentially slice through perfectly clean, flat cut. And that's what you want with printing because you want the whole area to be flat. So with a geometric print, what you can do is you can carve these things out with a scalpel. Here's one I had earlier. Or, again, going back to the... Uh, polymer clay um, side of things, you can buy these metal cutters, cookie cutters. They're cut for cutting clay. You could probably even do these with the kids' Play-Doh cutters, the plastic ones. And if you put this on your half a potato, just so it fits, and then press it into the flesh, not all the way, but just enough, so you can then take your tissue blade and you can just cut the excess away. Let's take that out there a minute. It doesn't matter if the excess isn't completely flat because this is a bit that won't be used for the printing. But again, it will leave you a nice clean outline and you haven't had to hack away at it with a scalpel. Um, and again, using the tissue blade, I'm going to turn this into a leaf. So I'm going to press it down at a slight angle, I'd say about mm, 30 degree angle. And then again there, just to take that wedge out of the middle. And then we'll make the veins of the leaf like this. I should keep a bin handy if I were you, because otherwise if you end up doing this and you don't know what you're doing, you end up with odd bits of potato all over your living room and you don't know where the hell they've come from. So cut that like that. And all the time that I'm doing this, you can probably see the water coming out of this potato because they are so damp. So what I would do is once you've cut your leaf design, is I'd actually leave it upside down on a bit of kitchen towel for a little while just to get that excess wetness out because if you're going to use acrylic paints on this, which I am, you don't want them to be watered down. So I'm just going to protect my blade with this sleeve. Move these to one side. This side. And just show you some that I cut earlier. Here's a leaf. This is a spiral. Now this was done by hand, but Essentially, I made the original circle with a round cutter. Um, we've got this sort of shield design, again, that was made with a cutter. And then this is just a simple triangle that was just made with a knife blade. So, to print, I'd recommend 100% cotton. And I'd also recommend that what you do is you find yourself a piece of paper so that you don't get paint all over your cutting mat. Lay your cloth on your paper. Now, to apply the paint to the stamp, I mean, you could brush it on with a soft paintbrush. The danger is, though, that what happens is you end up getting lots of paint down inside these grooves and you don't get a particularly clean image from it. So I've discovered the best way to do it is get an old kitchen tile and a bit of funky foam. This is like the plastic foam that you have for kids' schools. If you make it wet, it will stick onto the tile so you've got effectively a nice palette to use. Grab yourself some paint. Again, ordinary crafters acrylic is fine for this. Try not to get it on your hands. A 
and then use another piece of funky foam as a squeegee and just temp you can't see what I'm doing over there can you temp this paint out onto the surface so you've got a nice smooth layer of paint you'll have lots of paint left on here so just make sure you don't put your hand in it get your stamp check it on there make sure that your stamp is covered and then begin printing and you can apply fairly firm pressure to this potato these are stamps that I made yesterday. I didn't keep them in the fridge overnight. I don't know how long they would actually keep out of the fridge. So if you're having a stamping session, try and make sure that you do most of your printing on that same day so that your potato hasn't shriveled up and the, sh uh, the print of it doesn't shrink up. If you find there's a design that you particularly like, it's well worth actually stamping that design onto a piece of card and using that piece of card as a template for your next potato as it were so that you can keep doing that repeat design I'm running out of paint here and you can of course you can do this with fabric paint you can do this with proper sort of screen printing block printing ink um, I just find acrylic I've got such a huge range of colors and they're so cheap it's the perfect thing to experiment with so do something like this. I mean, what you can then do is if you have a second colour, you can overprint that leaf in another design. But they do come out really, really well. I'll just show you the others on this piece of paper and how they look. Piece of paper, piece of cloth. This is a triangular pennant design, which... You can stamp like this and then if you mix, what shall I mix in with this? A little bit of very dark blue. Again, say, so use this as you would if you were using a palette knife, say you were icing a cake or something like this, just to merge that red and that blue into a Quite a grubby looking purple, to be honest with you. Wasn't the best choice of colours. But then what you can do is take your triangular stamp, stamp it in the other direction. To make an all over geometric print. That's that one. This is the shield design. And this is the circle or spiral. Let's just put a little bit more paint on there. And it's worth just checking before you stamp that the whole of your underside is covered. With this circle here, that's slightly not quite as flat as it should be. And I know when I first printed, I'm just having to rock on that back edge to make sure you get the whole spiral. So really simple, it is relatively clean. The great thing about potatoes is as you're stamping, if you've got fingernails, you can actually grip into the stamp with your thumb to hold it so it doesn't drop everywhere. And when you've mastered it, what you can do is you can print these step and repeat patterns. So we've got the uh, orange spirals and then what I've done is I've then done like a sunset so it looks more like an all over print orange in the background and then overprinted in red. These are the two colours of leaves that we've got. That's just a single triangle, so it's like a pennant design. This is another triangle, slightly bit larger piece of fabric. Ooh. So they're great for cushion covers. Uh, you know, you can make bags. You can actually, you know, you can decorate t-shirts and items of clothing, provided that they're flat when you're stamping them. They come out really, really well. And what I would, one other tip I was going to say, with the acrylic paint, because when acrylic dries, it, it once it's dried, it doesn't come out of clothing. So once it's dried on here, it's not going to come out of the cloth. But you will find it's a little bit stiff at times. 
So what I would suggest you do is allow the acrylic paint to dry completely on the cloth and then just give it a rinse in sort of warm water and it will just take that stiffness off it so that you can use it and it's flexible enough to be used for garments and home furnishings. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you're going to raid the back of your fridge for those old sprouting potatoes. Sit down and do it with the kids. If you do do it with the kids, just take care with this knife if you use something like that. It's a sharp enough blade to cut. It's not going to cut the back of my hand. But if you were to run it across your fingertip, you might do. So have fun with it. But take care. And we'll see you next time. If you've been inspired to create, please share your makes with us in the comments section below. And if you've enjoyed videos by The Crafts Channel, hit the like button. Want to see more of us? Then click subscribe. See you next time.